I'm Jennifer. I graduated from Aberystwyth University from plant biology degree last summer. And today I was supposed to give a really big scary talk at Westminster in London because I won a top student award thingy. But today I'm going to do an equally nerve-wracking thing. I'm going to be talking about my undergrad research in front of a camera during lockdown. So my um, little project kind of started with me rebelling my supervisors. They told me to do my undergrad research on invasive plants and image analysis. So basically I just went out to the world, looked at different kind of plants and one of my supervisors said that, oh, look at brambles, oh, they're horrible creatures. So I got hooked and I told them that I, I've chosen brambles. They didn't like it and told me not to do my pro, uh, project on them. So I chose to do my project on brambles. So what are brambles? These are these little fellows that you might know because one, they grow everywhere, mostly in Europe, UK, but you find them in America. You might call them blackberries over there. And they grow blackberries. And these little creatures are really good at growing really, really fast. So you might have had a pain getting them removed from your garden as well. But my research focused on their leaf shapes and basically kind of asking what is a bramble species? Because you can have a cat and a dog, but with a bramble, it's not that easy to tell which one is what species. So basically, I just went out there and started reading about brambles. So my first question to the amazing camera woman today is that what do you think? How many bramble species are there in Europe? Hmm. Just take a guess. Maybe 3,000? 3,000. Well, you're close, but Ooh. not so much. <laughs> I mean, uh, there are currently more than 700 bramble species accepted in Europe, but that's only in Europe. Someone said that, oh, if all the different uh, bramble morphologies would be described, then there would be about 20,000 out in the world, which is wow. just crazy. Basically, a French and a German guy started describing bramble morpho species uh, about 150 years ago, and they started looking at brambles closer and closer, and started picking up that, oh, they grow really differently. The leaves are shaped different, the, the uh, prickles, the pricklets, the little, little hairs on them, the uh, flowers, the blackberries and everything, they just started describing more and more different brambles. But I asked, like, is this actually real? Are they really different kind of species, morpho species, or are they just different phenotypes? Because they are adopting to their environment. So brambles are currently categorized in genus Rubus, then subgenus Rubus, then you have sections, subject, subsections, series and within that you have microspecies so if you tell that to any taxonomist they are looking like what is that that's just a messy system so basically i just said that okay let's use image analysis for bramble leaf shape collect lots around the uk and do a bit of molecular work look at the phylogeny and look if they are just different shapes in different environments so i went around the uk picked six different locations in Devon, Cambridgeshire, Norfolk, sandy beaches, forests, hedgerows and everything. And I cut down lots of brambles and everyone who walked past by me were really worried that there's something wrong with me with big shears and big gloves and because of the prickles I had blood and scars everywhere. But when I said that I'm an undergraduate plant science student, everyone understood. Um, so I picked the leaves, I pressed them down, I imaged them, and then I used something that's called geometric morphometrics. So I have a couple of leaves here, and what you can see is that one of these is really pointy, has really tiny little um, prickles and lots of hair on the stem. Then you have this one where you can see that the leaves are really overlapping and this one is kind of white underneath and this one is really hairy but not white 
So that's called felted nest if it's hairy underneath. And I have a whole other leaf that has another shape again. So this one is round, the other one is pointy, and this one has lots and lots of purple prickles. She's all these different um, characters that matter when you are supposed to describe a bramble. And I went out there and started analyzing all this data that I got. And basically what I have found is that in different environments you have all sorts of different um, shapes. But when you work with brambles, basically they range from diploids to octoploids. They can reproduce via apomexis, which is asexual production. So they, the shoot just goes down into the ground and a new bramble grows. So it's kind of a clone. And they can hybridize as well with each other. So the genetics is really messed up. So I had to do some sequencing as well. And I flew my bramble species over back to Hungary, where I had some fantastic collaborators. And within 10 days, we have come up with a way to sequence three different regions. I did a phylogenetic uh, analysis and then what was so amazing, I will put up a couple of graphs here, that I projected this phylogenetic analysis into shape space. It sounds really fancy but basically what you will see is that the shapes clustered according to different environments in um, within one haplotype, within one kind of species kind of term. Uh, and that basically meant that if you put one plant, which has kind of the same genetic makeup, it just grows differently in different environments. So basically this whole 700 European bramble species has to be reconsidered, because I'm pretty sure that there's lots of it, which is basically the same stuff, but it just grows differently. So then I actually um, moved to universities. I moved from Anglia Ruskin University to Aberystwyth University and that's why I continued working with Bramble's. And what I wanted to do is that to cross-validate this uh, phenotypic plasticity that they go, grow differently because of the environment, I actually cut down these Bramble's and I chopped them up so that would be two nodes on one cane and then I would stick them into perlite, which is kind of like a white uh, volcanic material, put them in a mist bed, put some hormones on it, and then I had a look if I can actually propagate bramble's. So from one cane, I could come up with like 10 new plants. So I know that the genetic material is the same, and then I could maybe induce different environments in the greenhouse and see if the leaf shapes change. So why does this all matter really? Basically, first of all, it's fun. I proved my supervisors wrong, which is fantastic. Second, the arrival of the phenotype is super interesting into, for any kind of person who is working with evolutionary biology or doing conservation. Brambles are the number one plant visited by pollinators in the UK. They provide really, really good source of uh, pollen and um, they do amazing ecosystem services as well around hedgerows. And now that I have done this kind of research, I really love brambles. I think they're really smart. If you try cutting them down, they will grow back five times faster just because they can. Uh, and they will also change if they are five foliate leaves or three foliate leaves, which is so fantastic. No scientist has ever looked into that. Um, so I really hope that the next time you look at the bramble, just go close, um, properly look at it, look at the leaves and the fricklets and their little hairs, and there is a whole Facebook group if you'd like to get your bramble identified, so check that one out. Um, and I hope I cheered you up a little bit during these times. Um, if you have any questions, please just ask. Thanks! Oh my god, that was really long. <laughs>